So we're in 2025 and in 2024 we compared and benchmark against all the main companies Apple versus AMD, Nvidia, Intel. In terms of creators what did people actually use like was Intel actually losing sales or did AMD actually gain some of these sales with all the drama that was going on in 2024? Well Puget Systems just released an article of 2024 trends so they just released how many AMD, Nvidia, Intel systems with RAM and storage and all of these things. What did people actually buy? And let's analyze this. Licensing Windows is cheap and easy with whokeys.com. And if you use the code TN20, you get an extra discount. Complete the purchase, copy the key, and paste it to the activation settings. And you're all done! Also check out their Microsoft Office 19 license and use the same code TN20 for the extra discount. Check out hookies.com in the video description below. So I've taken screenshots of the article, and if you want to check it out, I'm going to leave it all linked in the description below, where you can also find the like button and subscribe button if you haven't subscribed yet. And if you do want to reach out and need an answer from me, I always get back to my Minect messages within the first 24 hours. Very importantly this is very specific kind of niche Puget Systems doesn't really do gaming PCs they offer solutions for creative professionals so whether you're in 3d 2d video photo architecture scientific servers big scientific calculations or some chemical things then that's where you would really go to get your ultimate system with so it's not really representing the whole market if that makes sense of all the pieces it's a very specific one but since you know you and me were creators it's interesting to see what actually happened so on the side here you can actually see a lot of things that got released during 2024 or 2023 so there's different dips and going ups and downs depending like what was happening just so you're aware of that now this first graph here is showing the overall CPUs AMD versus Intel and this is from 2021 so we've got the first year 2022 2023 and 2024 looking at 2021 you can see that AMD interestingly around this area was massively leading in terms of CPU sales so that is Ryzen 5000 and this is Intel's 11th gen in here but roughly around 2020 and end of 2021, 2022, this is where the Intel's 12th gen got launched. And then that absolutely skyrocketed in terms of the sales for Intel. Until 2022, you can see kind of the Intel 12 and 13 and soon to be 14th gen is always been higher than AMD sales. But if you actually look at the percentages on the side here, you can see that they're both hovering really this 50% mark kind of one slightly above the other one slightly down so AMD versus Intel sales are kind of the same in terms of overall that also includes AMD Threadripper, uh, Threadripper Pro and Ryzen all of these together but now 2024 in general it's kind of been the same as 2023 until like the second half around this point where things started to actually switch so AMD sales went up around the Q3 point in there and then Intel sales went down. So if you remember what happened during 2024 in the middle was Intel had their 13th, 14th gen stability issues and a lot of people were like not so sure about it. Uh, even though Puget Systems PCs weren't really affected with the issue, just the way they set them up and the way they custom do the BIOS, it actually kind of alleviates the problem for a lot of customers. And then they help to actually even further support that. So they're doing a great job to make sure that their customers were all right. But regardless, AMD for the first time, the Q4 2024 was ahead of Intel in the sales since 2021, really, around that point which is very interesting. If you remember, the Core Ultra 200S launch also, which happened Q4, which wasn't very successful for Intel, is also another reason why Intel sales have gone down. This was including all the Threadripper and other options as well, which actually, if you look at Threadripper versus Xeon sales, then Threadripper is winning like by 90% or even more. So 
Let's have a look at the Ryzen versus Core or the client CPUs, how Purge Systems likes to call them. AMD versus Intel 2021 versus 2024. So 2021, you can see again, AMD was higher because of the Ryzen 5000. Then 2022, we've got Intel's 12th, 13th gen. Ryzen goes down because, you know, we've got QuickSync and 12th gen was actually very, very good. 13th gen was also pretty good here. And then we've got the 2024. Finally, that starts from this point where 24 starts with AMD Ryzen roughly about 20% of the sales around there and then go slightly down to Q2 but then Ryzen 9000 got launched which was Q3 of 2024. So you can see that at this point now here we've got the Ryzen 9000 launch and it's slowly growing up and Intel is going down because of the instability issues from around the middle of 2024 going down and then especially Core Ultra launch it's going further down. But interestingly, if you look at the overall graph, that 50% margin kind of is here, which means that still most of the people, even by the end of Q4, were buying Core Ultra series or, you know, Core Intel Core kind of CPUs more than AMD Ryzen. AMD is still at around 40% here compared to Intel being still around 60% of the sales. Maybe by the end of 2024, it was roughly around 50-50, close there. But that shows that probably video and photo guys, even maybe 3D guys, were still going with Intel regardless of the instability issues and the poor launch of Core Ultra 200S series on desktop. Interestingly though, now, because of the 50 series has been launched, I would love to see the graph continue because I believe in 2025, Q1, AMD is really going to dip even the sales for the main Ryzen versus Core, Intel Core CPUs. But we're going to have to see that. When we're looking at the workstation CPUs for AMD and Intel, so we've got Intel Xeon, and then obviously from AMD, we've got AMD Threadripper and Threadripper Pro. If you remember, by the end of 2022, at this point, the AMD Threadripper, AMD just canceled it basically. Just there was Threadripper 3000, and after that, 5000 never came out. There was only Threadripper Pro that came from 5000, and that that's why basically the Threadripper sales that was this blue graph there, just kind of added to this teal graph of AMD Ryzen Threadripper Pro going on to that. And you can see the blue, there's nothing on there. It's just kind of done. In terms of Intel Xeon, as you can see, it's kind of hovering between the 10 to 20% mark, somewhere around there. Q4 2023, it was just over 20% of the sales, but in 2024, where we are right now, it's kind of just 10% of the sales, which means AMD has got 90% of the sales in, a in Ryzen Threadripper and Threadripper Pro. Interestingly, the Threadripper Pro, even in Q2, was a little bit higher than the Threadripper, but generally they're kind of like 50, around the 50-50 mark there. Both of them really selling most of the sales for the workstation CPUs. And it kind of makes sense because Threadripper uses less power and offers you kind of a lot more than Intel offers. In some cases, there is certain workflows and situations where Intel Xeon is higher, and I guess that's the 10% of the people, but most people will go Threadripper if they need something like that. Since Puget Systems doesn't really sell AMD Radeon GPUs, because in professional workflows, that they're not really professional, if that makes sense. Uh, they're more like meant for gaming and the support and they're not as stable in the history of Radeon GPUs. There is the Radeon Pro GPUs, but looks like not a lot of people really use them because in actual professional environments where you need some mechanical or liquid or chemical calculations doing, then the NVIDIA GPUs really just shine a lot higher there. I'm hoping that this would change. The same with Intel. Intel Arc really isn't for professional workflows. This is really for gaming. Although in certain workflows like video and photo editing, Arc has a very good value per dollar, but that's why they're only showing here NVIDIA GeForce and NVIDIA Professional. So I'm thinking there is not a lot of people who go with NVIDIA Professional GPU who also have either Ryzen or Core, Intel Core CPUs. 
most likely the nvidia professional cpus as you can see that about the 20 percent of the sales here are the guys who buy workstation cpus as well to pair with this because you need more vram and that's what you need for but basically 80 to 90 percent of the gpus that have been sold have been nvidia geforce gpus and as you can see in 2024 we're hovering roughly around the 80% mark. In terms of operating system, obviously Windows 10 is a little bit old now. And what I'm liking in this graph here is that Windows 10 kind of just went back to zero from about 10% to zero. So basically all of the creative workflows seem to have moved over to Windows 11. But there is also Linux that takes roughly around 10% of the sales which is interesting but windows 11 has slowly been growing higher 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 it's nice to see that the windows 11 probably is the normal fully stable operating system for everybody basically in terms of primary storage so this is you know your main operating system and perhaps some programs and for some people cache drive what's that been like so from 2021 you can see that it was kind of just below one terabytes on the side and then it's slowly been growing higher and higher and higher q2 was about i mean 2023 was roughly between 1.5 to 2 terabytes and interestingly as the years go on our storage needs go higher as well in 2024 we peaked like over 2 terabytes and then kind of went a little bit down more specifically if we're now looking at the primary primary storage per capacity then one of the important graphs here if you look at the 500 gigabytes I believe is like kind of now become obsolete and people will go one terabyte minimum and what I thought is actually true so if you look at this graph here it's going down 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 and about q1 2023 it just dropped all the way to zero from 2023 q3 but basically not a lot of sales on 500 gigabytes of storage some of them probably still but it's basically inexistent and a lot of people are going with one terabyte so one terabyte of the storage is the most common one as you can see which is this graph where about 40 percent and then from about 2024 you can see we've gone from 45 to 50 to 45 percent so very basically every second sale of the system has one terabyte of main capacity storage but then at the same time in 2024 we can see a little bit of a dip in two terabytes and then going back up on the two terabytes but also four terabytes has been on a rise on the bottom this light blue graph and the eight terabyte primary storage is kind of the same here roughly around five percent of the sales now who needs eight terabytes as their primary storage i don't know like wh why do you just need one all of this together kind of makes no sense to me i would like to separate it a little bit more and i think it's even cheaper looking at the ram average capacity obviously over the years we've had more and more and more this is total gigabytes and you'll be thinking in 2021 the average was around 80 gigabytes of ram well it's because a lot of the workstations they just rank it so much higher so if you have some that are 32 gigabytes but then one workstation that is 512 for example or 256 it just ranks it very very high which is not really fair graph that we'll see that in a minute but it's slowly gone higher and in 2024 we can see that we've reached a peak of over 160 gigabytes of average ram capacity but if we scroll down and look at the actual dims and the actual capacity per unit that's where it kind of makes more sense so as you can see in q1 2024 there's a few graphs that start on the bottom here and that is the 192 gigabyte versions then the 96 gigabyte version 384 gigabyte version and even the 768 gigabyte version that's because what happened with ddr5 is we are not anymore to like 32 or 64 gigabyte per dim we also have 48 gigabytes and 96 gigabyte dim sticks which means that there's kind of a new graph that starts to happen because 64 gigabytes may not have been enough for some people and then 128 gigabytes was maybe too much so the 96 is the nice one you know kind of in the middle ground and then 128 gigabytes may have not been enough for some people who are on ryzen or core ultra or intel cores platforms but now we have also the 192 and what we can see here is this light blue is 128 gigabytes and from 2024 you can see that the 128 gigabytes has dipped 
quite a bit just because you have the 96 gigabyte and 192 gigabyte versions where that's kind of equaled out a little bit in there. Interestingly, the 20, 256 gigabyte RAM has gone higher, probably because more Threadripper systems have been sold and the 256 gigabytes is very common Threadripper capacity. Interestingly, the 64 gigabytes has kind of become the standard whereas the 32 gigabytes has gone down, 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 and less than 10% of the systems that have been sold are 32 gigabytes in RAM capacity. Now, I don't know why Puget Systems even offers 32 gigabytes because I believe that's like not really enough these days for creators. Maybe it's because the people who are buying them just know that they will be upgrade upgrading their RAM and they just buy the higher capacity and don't want to pay maybe Puget Systems higher price for the, that. But to me, that 32 gigabyte should be even less than 5%. But hey, that's what people are buying. That's why this graph is interesting. And 64 gigabytes, if you look here, has gone kind of down and makes roughly around 25% of the sales by the end of 2024. So every fourth is around 64 gigabytes. In conclusion, is this something that surprised me? Well, there was a few things. I thought that the Intel Core Ultra and Intel's core systems would have dipped a lot more in sales, but they kind of went equally 50-50, or actually the core Ultra and Intel uh, core was still higher by the end of 2024 compared to the Ryzen from AMD. 2025 is going to change that because we've got NVIDIA 50 series GPUs that also support 422 10-bit H.265 decoding, which means that Intel QuickSync doesn't really have an advantage. So you can go with a Ryzen CPU, and a 50 series GPU and get the same performance as you would previously get only on Intel platform. So Intel's gonna have to invent something else now why they are gonna go ahead. And I'm excited to see what that's gonna be this year. Probably the Core Ultra 300 series. And I really hope that Intel's gonna do a comeback here. Intel right now seems to be the more budget and best bang for buck option just because their CPUs are cheaper and they just have to cut their prices because they're not the performance leader but they're very good best bang for buck and that's why i highly recommend checking out the best bang for buck create pcs in the video description below so you can build yourself something that doesn't break your bank go check it out what kind of worries me is nvidia's lead in the gpu market which means that we're still going to be paying a lot more for the gpus because there's no competition and AMD's lead in the workstation CPU market because Intel's seeing 10% and AMD's got 90% of the market. Well, it is what it is. But interestingly, every single company has a lead in different kind of areas. So the client CPU, so people who do maybe video editing and content creation on social media and perhaps not so big studios that require Threadripper systems, they're kind of using Intel. Then AMD has the whole workstation PC sorted for their Threadripper platform. There's no competition. And then Nvidia has got the GPU completely covered, no competition in there. I'd love to see Nvidia CPUs come to the market as well to see what they're gonna be. So that was 2024, 2025, here we come. Let's see what happens. Thanks for watching, bye-bye.